everybody, Ingrid Blackburn here. Welcome to the Creative Grove. Today I have a very special scenic card for you. I'm using all Stampscape stamps to create this super fun Harry Potter inspired card. You can see here I, I just kind of jumped right in. I, forgive me, I lost the very, very beginning of my video. But here I have the tree trunk by Stampscapes. And you can see I extended it here. I flipped it around and you can kind of see where that seam is. That's where that arrow is pointing to. And that shows you where there's two meet. If I hadn't pointed that out, you may not have noticed that. And later on in the video, we're even going to extend the bottom a little bit further to make that go the full length of the card. This is the tree trunk trio right here. And I'm just going to stamp that one tree. Notice I'm taking a little tiny bit of the ink away at the bottom. Just want to kind of blend that into the card a little bit better, not have such a harsh line. We're going to clean that off. We're going to stamp one more trunk. I'm using my Misty because I have all the unmounted Stampscape stamps. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and you can see here at the very bottom of my stamp I'm taking just a piece of paper towel and I'm kind of blotting away just dabbing up some of that ink so that it's not as dark, not as harsh and it helps to build seamless scenes. So here's kind of the beginning of my card. I'm not gonna stamp the entire scene, but I just wanted to kind of get a reference point as to where I was going to put the large buck. Now, this is going to be my Patronum, and here's the actual finished card, and you can see how my, my stag is actually sitting further up into the card, but I needed to know where I was going to leave the white area on my card as I do the ink swipe technique. That's how we're gonna actually build up the color and the drama in the actual scene. So it was important for me to have just a few reference points and that's why I stamped a couple of those tree trunks. Now you can see here I have a piece of acetate and I took some stays on and I always stamp all of my scenic stamps onto large pieces of acetate. And this helps me to build my scene. I can actually layer tons of them on top of each other so I get an idea of what my scene looks like. A lot of times I take a photo with my camera and that gives me a reference point for actually building my scene. So to continue coloring our card, this portion first off is 100% true speed. I'm gonna work now with the ink swipe technique and that's gonna help build up the tension, the drama, uh, all the color, the mystical parts of this card. And the ink swipe technique is a relatively easy technique. I'm using a color box stylus tool. And this is the sponge tips that come with this tool. There are a couple different ones. You can get these at any big box store. You can also get them at stampscapes.com uh, or probably any, any online crafting store. I never have this tip completely flat on my surface. And you can see here I'm pointing to that. I'm keeping it, you can see here I always have just the very tip of it down, but not the back of it. So not the heel, the part that's closest to you. And I tap down various color, and then I drag that out a little bit. And I'm using Tumble Glass here by Ranger, and it's a super light, translucent color. It's perfect for my base. I guarantee you, you're never gonna see Tumble Glass on this project. But right here, I'm basically priming my cardstock and I'm using a glossy coated cardstock and this is Chrome Coat 12 point. Uh, it's a wonderful cardstock, very heavy weight and it's great for these scenes. You'll see me flip my card back and forth because I'm right handed so I need to always, whenever I'm working on that surface, it's always gonna be towards the top. So I'll be flipping this project round and round and round the whole time. But you can see that I'm slowly starting to build up that color and we're starting to speed up rather quickly. I've added all of the tumbled glass down and then from there I'm going to add some weathered wood and weathered wood is a really light gray. Uh, that also is a really nice color and that's a good base color. You're not going to see much of that either. You can see here that when I'm adding the color, I'm mostly adding it to the edge and then kind of dragging it across and then perhaps in a couple of spots. Remember where that stag was. I'm trying to keep that area somewhat white and I don't want all the color, especially as we start to layer darker color, I don't want that to overtake that area because once I lay down all that color, I'm not gonna be able to lift it back up. And 
a Patronum or a Patronus charm in the Harry Potter, uh, you know, that is that really bright, explosive white and it helps to fight off all the evil, the Dementors that attack. And so you can tell I'm a little bit of a Harry Potter geek. I love all these movies and books. And so to capture that, I needed to keep a portion of my project completely white. So you can see here I've added a little bit of green too. I started off with a little bit of shabby shutters and then layered on some brushed sage. And from there, I added a little bit of peeled paint. I um, wanted to get just the very lower edges of the trees, a little green to have a little bit of a mossy feel. And eventually later on, I actually layer down a little bit of forest moss as well, but not until a little bit later, because that's a very, very dark green, very earthy green. It's a great color. Uh, I also layered down a little bit of broken china and uh, and then as we continue to develop the color, I'm going to actually incorporate Stormy Sky. Stormy Sky is a really nice dark, but not overly dark blue. So it will really help to get that kind of stormy, um, dangerous feel that I'm going for. I picked a scene that is from the end of the book of book three or towards the end when they're in the forest and, you know, if you haven't seen it, okay, <laughs> I hope to not spoil it for you, but maybe you just need to fast forward through this little part right here. Uh, you know, when the Dementors attack Sirius and Harry and they're down at the edge of the lake and it's really dark and it's kind of a scary, creepy scene and you have all these giant trees and that's kind of the feeling that I was going for. So when I decided to turn that inspiration, inspired scene into a card, I knew I needed this, this giant trunk and I knew that I could create something magical with the ink swipe technique. You can see here we're starting to layer down stormy sky and then from there we're going to add faded jeans and chipped sapphire, our last blues. And then from there we're going to go into grays and even layer down some, some blacks. Uh, but you can see the colors really starting to develop. So the tone of the project is starting to change a little bit. And that's really what you're going for. And that's where the ink swipe technique is very magical. Because what you're doing is you're, you're dragging that color across that um, coated cardstock. And you can see it just starts to develop, start layering more and more and more on the edges. And you're building kind of that vignette that draws you into the card. And that's exactly what I was trying to achieve. Now here's a little bit of Blackjack, and this is a great color by Katherine Pooler. I, I love it, it's a very nice cool gray, and I kind of wanted that steel kind of look, and that was uh, why I pulled that color out. Um, for the most part I use Distress inks here, because uh, they layer really beautifully, and so do Katherine Pooler inks, but I wanted some more neutral, uh, tones and you can see here dragging some of that dark gray across it's kind of really changed it it's, it's starting to evolve a little bit I have some of the green you might be wondering why I have green down on in the middle of the scene I was kind of going for that earthy moss covered forest floor look in a couple spots as you saw I just used a hickory smoke marker and I'm just extending the tree trunks a little bit I'm using the edge of my stylus tool to add a little bit of color and it's funny because just like in art you know your project goes through this hideous ugly duckling stage always and mine's definitely in there right now because you can see I'm kind of starting to extend the bottom of these tree trunks and it just you're like going oh my god Ingrid, please stop because it doesn't look good. But you have to trust me here. You gotta trust the process. You can see I have a Micron pen. Uh, Kevin does such a beautiful job in creating these stamps. And what he does is he uses dots. So here, because of that, I'm now gonna take this trunk and this is how I'm extending this. I'm just going to, with my hands, stamp it. I'm not gonna use a Misty. I'm definitely gonna blot off the edges all the way around because I'm really trying to get that texture from the inside of the tree. And look at this. All I'm doing is just creating more amazing depth texture and it looks like it's part of the stamp. I mean, isn't that not amazing? 
I just love using these stamps. There's so much you can do with that. Now, I kind of got some weird, funky little marks there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and add a little bit more from that tree and it's going to all end up working out. And I'm going to use my Micron pen and a little bit more shading and it all works out perfectly. But I love how you can take these stamps and just really manipulate them. Look at what a tall tree I created. That stamp is actually only it's not the top inch and not the top bottom inch on that card, but we were able to elongate it using the stamp itself, which is very cool. Um, if you have never tried stamping with stamping with stampscapes, I really encourage you to test out some of these. There's just so many amazing, amazing stamps that you can uh, buy individually or in sets. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can also. Uh, blend your scenes together. This is actually something that I'm going to do with the very bottom of the stamp. Before I stamp that down, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to tear it. And if you tear a paper towel in a certain direction, it'll tear pretty straight across. So it has that really nice, uh, very light feathering on the edge. Lay that down so that it hits just the edge of your stamp and you'll see that it kind of helps take some of the harsh edge away from that bottom. And this is what you do when you layer a lot of these scenic stamps over each other. It helps to blend them together. But see how that really easily blended at the bottom there? It just looks like it just kind of grew out of that spot. It doesn't have like some weird hard line. That's a great way to use scenic stamps um, and build your scenes as well. So here, I'm, I sped this up super quick. You can see I'm using my transparency again to kind of get an idea of where I want my, my stamps. And I'm just going to create some different trees. I'm going to elongate that one as well and use some of the thinner trees from the tr uh, Tree Trunk Trio as well just to kind of fill in my forest scene. You can see, there we go. We just made that nice and long so that we have another one. The reason I want those really long trees um, towards kind of the front, I it's becoming more of a foreground stamp than something that's further back. Even though they're the same width, because I made it longer and I made the base even wider, all the, that one to the left, uh, that helps to give you the proper perspective in the scene. So here I'm stamping a couple of those two trees and you can see I again used that paper towel to kind of give it the illusion of just kind of growing out of that area. And I'm staggering where I'm stamping them because trees are not usually all in a straight line. So this way it gives the scene a little bit more of a realistic look. I'm breaking apart that tree trunk trio and here I'm going to add one all the way to the edge and just really filling up the scene completely. I'm even going to bring in a third stamp uh, call, and it's one of Kevin's newest stamps right here. And this is the leafless limb trees. And these are beautiful stamps, very kind of dark. <laughs> I like to think of them kind of like spooky a little bit. Uh, they're just really a tree trunk with no leaves on them. Uh, but it works really well. I, I did stamp it a little awkwardly. I should have stamped it a little bit higher. Uh, but hey, I'm not perfect. You know, I, I make mistakes too. I end up showing you how I fix that in a little bit. But you can see it's kind of got that eerie look too. And I thought that that would kind of um, work with the scene. I don't know if you noticed, but I covered up my big tree trunk with a paper towel when I stamped that down. And because I didn't really want a lot of those spindly uh, branches to just kind of block that big trunk. It was okay on the small one, but not the big one. And uh, you can see here at the bottom, it's kind of awkward. So what I ended up doing was uh, taking a couple of pens, a Micron pen, and uh, there's the hickory smoke again, and just kind of elongating that and making it kind of come together with the other tree, almost as if it's growing out of that other other trunk. And that seemed to work. So our scene is really starting to come together. Now it's fully stamped and we have a lot of color going on. It's important to note that when you're stamping all 
this black down and then you want to do some ink swiping, you gotta make sure that that black is dry. I stamped some of the uh, snowy rocks and that's the small one across. I just wanted to have some pebbles. If you look at that scene uh, that I was talking about in the third movie, there's like a rocky shoreline and that's kind of what I was trying to uh, imitate as well. I'm filling in my tree trunks now. I have all that mossy part on the bottom as uh, you see in the forest a lot. And I'm filling in the rest with brown now. I started off with some gathered twigs and then I added some walnut stain and um, finishing it off with some uh, ground espresso, which is the darkest brown that Ranger makes in the distress line and, and my favorite distress brown. I love that color. And then we're going to start to bring in a little bit of ground espresso into the actual scene itself. Definitely drag some across the bottom for dirt. I added a little bit of uh, gathered twigs also, which is a really good bar of color uh, there at the base. And gathered twigs is a little bit more of a warmer shade, whereas uh, ground espresso is a little bit more of a cooler shade. So when I'm doing a lot of ink swiping, I'm using ground espresso because I'm trying to keep the tone of the scene very cold uh, you know very dark and you can see right now there's a lot of light going on uh, there's a lot of light behind through the trees we need to get rid of some of that here I'm just evaluating and I do this a lot I stop and I look at what's going on and then adjust the tone or adjust the colors whatever I need so now we need to bring the tone of the card into a little bit more of the, the dark part. You know, we're supposed to be having Dementors kind of attacking this area, thus sparking the Patronus charm. So I'm grabbing my Memento black ink. Now I've already done a little bit of darkening with some soot black and some hickory smoke and a little bit of blackjack. But to really get that kind of dark feel that you see in the movies uh, you really need a dark a dark black so I'm using memento tuxedo black and you can see me starting to just really layer it on the edge and starting to swipe it across I wanted to let you know that a lot of times when I do my swiping I actually angle my brush ever so slightly onto the very very edge like like almost like an inside edge I'm right-handed so it'll be the left side that goes down um, or if I'm working the other way, as you see right there, the right side goes down. And I just really wanted to bring some of this darkness into the scene. I went back and forth and whether or not to try and create my own Dementor. I don't have a stamp that's like that. I don't really own any ghost stamps and not that a Dementor looks like a ghost, but I decided to just really go with the black swipes and just have that give you that feel of darkness approaching and it really kind of worked in the card and it's really it's really kind of cool because i'm watching this video as i'm doing this voiceover and i can see the finished product project right to my right and so to see the evolution of where it is right now and you really have all that light and in a second, we're just gonna, all the darkness is gonna start to engulf this project and it's really gonna start to take shape, which is really kind of cool. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. Your project goes through these different phases. It goes through this ugly duckling phase. And then, you know, you're looking at this going, wow, that's actually a really cool project. I don't really know if you need to take it any darker, but trust me, when you do, it just takes it to a whole nother level. And that's one of the most common mistakes is not taking art to a darker, a darker place. And when you do, that's when it really starts to shine. So until you've really done that, I encourage you to just push yourself, stretch yourself, and uh, you'll kind of get to know when enough is enough uh, over time. So you can see I took uh, the base of one of the trio trunks. I it really did, wasn't liking how that connected there. And again, because Kevin has done such a masterful job in creating these beautiful stamp images, you're able to add more texture, you know, without making it look weird. And that's pretty cool. So I'm adding, I, everything had to be dry and then I added a little bit of de-static tool there and I'm taking the large buck stamp and this is gonna be my stag Patron, Patronus. And 
adding a little bit of Versamark there, making sure because this uh, the large buck is standing in a little bit of grass, making sure not to get that grass and using a little bit of a paper towel there as well. Make sure to get that down with Versamark and I have the giant jar of Wow uh, Opaque Bright White. That's like the best deal ever. <laughs> I mean, really, you're getting, you know, like 10 jars of embossing powder for the price of like five. <laughs> it's really, really crazy. I really encourage you to get that if you haven't already. Get that heat set. And so there is my Patronus. Now, he looks really weird there all by himself, my little white stag. So our next challenge is going to be... Uh, to actually create the charm, that explosive white that surrounds that, uh, that buck right there. So that's gonna be uh, something that we're gonna do soon. First off, we're gonna darken this and I'm taking some soot black and some hickory smoke and we're just gonna add a little bit in between these trees. Like I said, it really was a little bit too light back there. It, in any other scene, that is something that I would strive for. But this particular one, not so much. This one we're going for dark, mysterious, spooky, edgy. Uh, and when I'm using my white, this is going to be to create the Patronus charm. I'm using a Unicorn Hero Arts uh, craft ink, and this is pigment ink. So I'm gonna start to swipe a little bit I wasn't 100% certain how I was gonna do this. I, I'm not gonna lie. And so I left a lot of this in the video rather than editing it out. It went through a little bit of a process. I kind of had an idea, it didn't quite work. I had another idea, didn't quite work. And then the third time was the charm and it worked. So here you see me swiping a little bit of pigment ink across my scene. And this actually worked. You know, if you were trying to a lot of times this is how I actually add, uh, you know, fog and mist uh, is with pigment ink. So I ended up, that didn't work by swiping it across. I ended up kind of blurring it out with a paper towel. I created a mask by cutting out one of uh, the circles and from some label paper. And then I decided, okay, well, let's go ahead and swipe in just white in this area. And we'll have this circle of this charm. And, you know, in theory, it should be perfect, right? <laughs> and I take it off and it just looks like a really weird circle with a white stag in the middle. And that didn't work either. too much of a contrast. It was a little too clean. You know what I mean? I needed to dirty up those edges. So that was my next task. I thought, okay, well, let's dirty up the edges a little, dirty up the edges a little bit. Let's swipe a little bit more out. Maybe take a paper towel. And you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, you just created this amazing scene and look at what you're doing. But you know what? That's the beauty of this. It's it's a coated <laughs> cardstock. This is actually glossy cardstock and pigment ink does not dry right away. So it's very easy to kind of lift and spread this around, which actually worked for the scene. And I knew that. So I actually wasn't having a freak out right here. Uh, I just kept playing with it because I knew that I would work eventually. And I was, you can see here, I'm trying to just kind of blend it out and create that that kind of white halo that you get around a Patronus charm in the Harry Potter books. And here it was kind of working a little bit. I kind of liked it. And then I thought, you know what, let's try something a little bit different. So I added a little bit more of the ink and you can see here now, you know, it, at least I have that circular shape. So now I take a paper towel, a clean paper towel, I have to stress, and just start to kind of blot it and to kind of make it a little bit more of a misty. And that worked a little bit, a little kind of like a little bit of misty area. And then I thought, you know what? Why don't we go in circular motion? And when I started to do that, that was where the magic kind of happened. And by having that circular kind of swipe, I needed, I needed a little bit more ink in order to really achieve it. So here I'm just laying down just some ink. Don't worry about how that looks. Taking again, a clean paper towel. And you can see me now going in a circular motion. And this really was the magic. So if you think of like a tornado, you know, it has those swirls or cotton candy has those swirls. That was the look I was going for. And that was the secret sauce right there. That really 
to me reflected what the Patronus charm really was and it made it look cool and not wrong. <laughs> it had that edginess, you know, on the edges, you know, it wasn't clean, but at the same time it was. And it just really kind of gave you the feeling of it radiating outward, you know, like a hurricane or a tornado or anything like that. And it, that whole explosive feeling to it. And so then I started to just go straight to the pad with my paper towel. So I thought I'd leave that in there for you to just kind of see, you know, different things, what to do and what not to do. So I hope that helped. So now that the my scene is like starting to dry, I'm just kind of bringing those edges a little bit darker, adding a little bit more shading there. Just really want to make sure that it has the right tone. Um, I'm really liking how it's turning out. It still was a little light for me. I still needed it to be a little tiny bit darker. And you know, when you when I create these scenes, I always wanna have that, you know, extra heavy darkness on the four corners. Uh, that's really important to me. I learned that actually from watching Kevin Nakagawa, who is the owner, the illustrator, and you know, uh, the, the stamp creator over there at Stampscapes. And you know, and it really is, it really draws you in. You know, you can just imagine that you are here across the lake on the other side of that tree and you're watching this entire scene unfold. Now, if you have seen the movies, you know that when a Dementor attacks, everything gets really, really cold. Like you can see your breath cold. So we needed to bring that a little bit more to the forefront in the scene. And that very front white gray, grayish patch is actually supposed to represent the frozen lake. So what I need to do now is take this gel pen and now I'm adding a lot of, you know, kind of crusted up frozen, ice snow here on the edge right along those rocks and I'll add a little bit more in the rocks and then at the same time I'm going to use the same gel pen to add a little bit of highlights you know to the trees not a lot just a little bit you know and you can take it for whatever you want it could mean that the trees are getting frosted you know from snow from the dementors or icy or just reflection of some of that light. And this is actually a step that, if you ever have a scene that's right next to each other and you have one that doesn't have any highlighting and one that does, I guarantee you, you will like the one that does a little bit better. It just kind of brings a little bit more realism to the scene. And uh, Kevin does this in such a beautiful way in his own videos. Uh, and definitely encourage you to watch, to watch them sometime. Uh, but uh, it's definitely something that you'll want to incorporate into into your scenic card making, especially if you're doing anything that has, you know, nighttime, uh, you know, a, a moon or even, you know, a sun in a darker, darker scene too, you know, wherever that light is. So I'm just kind of adding it a little bit here and there. I'm using my light source is my Patronus charm. So everything to the left of the scene is going to get the highlighting on the right and everything to the right of the scene is going to get everything on the left if that makes sense. So now that we have that and you can see that I sped through that relatively quickly for you because this video is already almost at 30 minutes which is crazy long uh, but uh, this project took probably close to three hours to complete uh, but it is so worth it. It's such a cool project. I mean it's Harry Potter. How can it not be right? So now I'm adding a little bit more depth. This right here is some soot black. And so we have some memento tuxedo black and some soot black and just kind of even bringing it a little bit darker, making sure that edging in the corners and everything just remains really, really dark. And uh, it's just such a fun scene. I've really enjoyed being a part of this. When Justine and I met this summer in Stuttgart in Germany and we had some lunch and and I don't even remember how we got talking about Harry Potter, but we thought, oh, let's do this. This will be a lot of fun. And I knew Laurel loved Harry Potter and she knew that Jessica loved Harry Potter. And so here we are, the four of us today, sharing four amazing cards inspired by these wonderful books and movies. And if you're still with me here at the very end, thanks for hanging with me. 
I hope you've enjoyed the card. It really was so much fun to create, and it was fun to watch the movies at the same time. I watched this, uh, I watched a part of the movie three and part of movie five, my two favorite movies, and while I was creating to just kind of keep me in the spirit and in the mood. It had been a while since I've seen them. I haven't read the books in a while. I've read them numerous times. And we do have a giveaway, so make sure that you leave a comment over on the blog because we have lots of giveaways. Make sure you hop along to everybody's video because and their blogs because we have some cool prizes. Every single person decided to give away prizes. We're all Harry Potter freaks. We love Harry Potter, you know, and we're all grown women. You know, it just really tells you how these books kind of transcended age. Leave me a comment. Tell me what is your favorite scene? What's your favorite book? What do you love about this project? I hope you learned something. Did you take something away? I hope so. But thanks so much for joining me. Here you can see I've got a very cool scene. We're going to now add it onto some dark cardstock. Here I didn't have a greeting that worked. So I decided to make my own. I downloaded a Harry Potter font and Expecto Patronum, why not? And I just edged that with a little bit of hickory smoke, a little bit of soot black, a little bit of sponging, and just pop that right down and I'm good to go. Don't need a whole lot there because you don't wanna cover up all that beautiful scene. So I have great close-ups here in addition to transitions at the end uh, and if you need more inspiration be sure to check out the videos at the end and I have all the links that you need below including if you want some of these great stamps you know definitely go check them out and next up make sure you check out all the other blogs check out all the videos go leave some comments on everybody's blogs because we have some awesome prizes tell us what your favorite Harry Potter moments are and you know what? If you're inspired and you end up creating your own Harry Potter projects, definitely let us know. Be sure to hashtag Crafty Potterheads. That's our own unique hashtag for this. It's so much fun. I've had a great time. I definitely have a lot more ideas. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if you see a couple more projects from this Crafty Potterhead. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.